And Paul Jennings' books are international bestsellers and are as famous for delivering lively plot twists that delight younger readers. But this time around, the much-loved author has taken a slightly different turn with his latest novel, The Lorikeet Tree. It's out today and Paul Jennings joins us now from Warrnambool. Paul, very good morning to you. Good morning, Michael. Lovely to be talking with you. Always great chatting to you, Paul. And, and we say different because I'm just going to read the, the very first sentence from the new book. And it reads, our problem started on the day we learned our dad was dying. So just take, take us through, give us a, a, a brief pricey of the plot here. Well, there's two children, twins, 15 year olds, and uh, th their mother's already passed away. And uh, they've just found out that their father has a brain tumour. And uh, they're, they're living in Warrnambool, I've said it in the, the town here, uh, on 60 acres of bushland. And uh, I, I had that 60 acres myself, which I planted from a bare paddock. And the girl in the story loves a bird that the cat in the story has uh, caught and she's trying to rescue it. So against the background of their father with this problem, they're fighting with each other. And uh, that, that's the basis mm. of the story. Uh, people have said to me that first line that you've uh, talked about sounds a little bit bleak compared to what I usually do. But uh, I did get the idea from this story from something that happened to my uh, sister and I when we first came to Australia. We, we were six, I was six at the time, and she was five. And um, we had no friends here when we arrived. Our grandmother had been left in England. It took five weeks on a boat to get here. And every night when I'd say my prayers, we were taught to say our prayers, I'd pray that my parents wouldn't die because I'd be left alone. And uh, so would Ruth, my sister. So from that little idea, I, I sort of thought, this is a very serious thing for kids. Yeah. They they learn about death very early, but then it's, they're not always talked to about it. And uh, they do know that their cat dies, their grandparents pass away. So that was the origin of the story. Yeah, uh, I was just going to bring that up. Uh, do you hope by uh, the, the end of, of this book, and I, and I think it's a change in a welcome sense because it will... Uh, focus kids on, on, on big issues, dealing with grief, dealing with loss. By the end of the book, Paul, that they'll have a better understanding of that, be it the loss of a pet or in the worst case scenario, the loss of a loved one. Yes, I hope so. When I sent the manuscript to uh, my editor of 40 years, Julie Watts, it was something different. And uh, she said to me, well, you've got us all reaching for the tissues on this one, Paul. <laughs> and... Uh, I said, yes, but they're happy tears, yeah. you know, because through through the terrible things that we can and will face in our life, um, there is hope, and the children's book should always end in hope, and uh, that love, love and courage can win through. Uh, happy tears here. Yeah, th this this reviewer had some uh, tears, but they were happy tears as well, Paul. Um, you'll be pleased to know. Hey, you mentioned your long career in, in, in writing, uh, much loved uh, author, uh, the, 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 the genius behind Round the Twist and other TV shows. What, what, what still excites you in particular about writing, Paul? What, what, what motivates you? Well, it started actually when I was 18 and I had, uh, I was leaving Teachers College and uh, the, the vice principal called me up and he said, uh, we, we thought you might like to be appointed to a school. There were 15 children who had learning difficulties. And um, he said, think about it. And my lecturer in English literature, he called me aside and he said, Paul, don't take it. He said, don't waste your talent on those kids. And I, even though I was only 18, I, I knew he was wrong and that mm -hmm. the way we treat our more vulnerable people says what sort of community we are, I think. Yeah. And uh, I, so I, when I taught that class, some people from the psychology bands came to see me right at the beginning and I could tell they were aghast that this 18-year-old had been appointed to this job with no special training and no experience. And one of them said to me, 
if you can find a book for every child in this class that they want to read and they can read, you'll be at least doing something. And that became a sort of a goal for me. Um, and uh, it took me 20 years, really, still looking to find... I, I figured out how you can find a book that a kid can read, but one they want to read if they don't like it is very hard. And well, it's, so, a, it's a skill you've, you've certainly mastered over uh, such a long career, uh, and uh, this, this book will, I'm sure, like all the, all the other ones you've written, Paul, sell like hotcakes. Really, really appreciate your time this morning, all the way from Warrnambool in Victoria. Paul Jennings, thank you. Thanks, Michael. Lovely to talk with you. You too, as always. Isn't he just a wonderful... He's a national living treasure. Oh, I just love it. I love always hearing his stories mm. about how things have come to life. Mm.